Hi, Matt, and welcome to Queer Magic. Uh, I was really pleased to have you on the show. And uh, I have recently found out about your work, which was very exciting. Uh, learned about Trinity Tarot, which is an inclusive tarot deck in many senses of the word inclusive, which is great. Um, and I know you've got more projects in the pipeline, so it's very exciting. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be speaking. Cool. Well, I really enjoyed your other interview um, that you did. Uh, so I'll, I'll add a link to that as well. So that was really good. Um, so, yeah, tell us about how long you've been involved in tarot and the occult. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was about 2018. Where I first um, I went to a I was at a workshop in um, at a music festival <laughs> um, and they were doing this um, secular tarot workshop and uh, by this lovely duo called Litwitcher and um, it was you know it was a um, gateway for me to give it a try because it was under the title of secular um, it sort of discarded any taboo surrounding my preconceived ideas of what tarot is um, coming from a bay religious like context um tarot was like not something i ever even considered although it was something which the enemy felt drawn to it's very visual and obviously I'm, I'm a visual artist so um that's when i first got involved with the tarot in particular but generally i think it's been something that's always interested me but from afar like even when i was a kid like it interested me but i never pursued it never looked into it for those reasons that, you know, due to being quite religious, it was nothing I ever pursued. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just always there in the back of my mind. Um, and it's only really been in the last two, three years where I've allowed myself to play with it. That's great. <laughs> and exploit it a bit. Fantastic. Yes, the devil's picture book, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I grew up with some of those stereotypes too. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually my way into the occult was really through the runes uh, oh, really? in the back of the Hobbit. So <laughs> there you go. Ah. <laughs> we all come in by some very interesting doors. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, tell us a bit about your position on the queer landscape, so to speak. So I... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not keen on labels, but um, I am, I identify as queer um, or as a gay man, but I think I prefer the term queer um, because I, yeah, I, I feel that's more encompassing, a bit more open um, to interpreta interpretation. And I would really sort of consider both my sexuality and my gender to just be queer and not binary, if that makes sense. But I'm very happy you know, he, him, um, and uh, and the way that I present is how I present, and uh, I feel like in a quite good balance with that. And again, that's a reason, reasonably um, recent thing in my life to sort of be comfortable in at this sort of stage of what I am. Um, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely think queer is a good term because it's just like okay, I'm you know I'm in this landscape but I'm, I'm going to be able to move around in this landscape if I want to. Exactly, exactly. and I love that it's a reclaimed word yeah. um, and I love reclaims um, so, <laughs> so if there's a reclaimed word excellent <laughs> I'll take that. Um, Absolutely yeah. yeah I mean it's like the word witch is also a reclaimed word so there you go. Exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because I think um, like as I said about the um, Tello having like a taboo attached to it. I have that with a lot of words. And I, I'm sure you won't mind me saying, like when you sort of sent me some prompts before this this chat, like words like the occult um, and uh, ma even just words like magic, to me, like are words that have always been very loaded and very mm. taboo. And they're ones that I still um, sometimes struggle with. And I find whenever I come across something new, like a new practice or a new thought, um, I go through a process of debunking the taboo to allow myself to explore it and um, and that's just a ha like a habit of thinking I think. Um, mm. It takes I mean yeah I'm thinking back to when I was two years out where you know where you are now and I'm like mm. yeah there are certain things that you just kind of go oh, but it's that <laughs> word oh my god exactly. <laughs> so I, I totally feel you. Exactly. Um, yeah, um, it was funny because I did sort of, you know, when I was writing 
the questions, the rewriting the questions view, I was like, hmm, should I say occult at this point? So <laughs> yeah. it did cross my mind. And then I was just like, oh, you know, um, you must have come across the, you must have had that word bandied yeah. about. So I, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, to I totally welcome it, and um, and it's something that I want to learn more. Like, I want to learn about all these things more. Um, I think for me, it's just having that kind of uh, a category which, to others, can specify or give an indication to what your belief system is. Yeah. Um, I think that's the thing that I get cautious about. Um, I think I have a bit of an aversion to um, <laughs> to to associating myself with a collective of beliefs or yeah or thoughts um but that doesn't take away from the fact that i probably do fit into one or two categories anyway um so yeah it's, a, it's funny. yeah i mean that's the interesting thing i think you know uh the occult generally is mm. just so broad um yeah. in the same way that queer is broad so you can get away with saying well i'm into that and and it's yeah. so broad that it's like you know could mean anything because you get christian occultists and pagan occultists and gnostic occultists and yeah and just, i don't know secular occultists so like you sure, can have yeah. a bunch of stuff <laughs> under that umbrella so so yeah mm. i think um but yeah you know you're still in an exploring sort of stage yeah. so you probably yeah, very much don't so. want to sit under a label just yet <laughs> <laughs> yes it's true i do feel very uh, young in my in this part of my journey anyway um, yeah that's an exciting place to be yeah, yeah. um and yeah you know i think the wonderful thing about this segment of knowledge as it were that you can um you can spend your entire life learning about it so and Definitely. redefining it and redefining your relationship with it and everything so mm -hmm. you know have fun <laughs> definitely and i love a lifelong journey that's great <laughs> it's very exciting um so yeah so i guess uh, um you know uh you don't you're not currently part of a tradition as such so um no. you have a previous tradition that was maybe not so affirming of queer identity yeah definitely um yeah so before before i sort of came out and before i left religion like obviously it was all about structure there was a system a structure um there's you know beliefs and um everything's very rigid Mm. And I think um, when I left that, what was interesting is I had this newfound um, freedom, but <laughs> um, there was all these gaps which were now missing, which used to be mm. um, we used to used to be um, provided by that system. So, and and what I found, although I haven't moved into another group of people, and I've been very cautious not to, like, because um, at first I thought about going to inclusive churches. And I ended up not doing that at all because mm. I just, once I was out of that, I didn't want to get back into anything, yeah. regardless of what it was. And um, but what I found were there were these holes that needed to be balanced out. Um, and so I think these practices that I've now developed came from that rather than looking into different truths. They just kind of happened naturally. Mm. So, um, for example, um, prayer has been replaced with meditation and um that sort of weekly sunday going church going um which is about reflection and like you know starting afresh you know seeking forgiveness has been replaced by um well i've replaced it with moon ceremonies which is a nice regular rotation of self-reflection and you know looking at your intentions and comparing how well you're doing with your goals um so just little things like that those little practices are sort of um brought a new structure mm. um but without a overarching big... framework sort of thing exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly exactly wow that's a no really interesting there. that's a really interesting approach because um you know i kind of went right okay i'm not a christian anymore this is when i was about uh 15 i think oh, really? uh, and my best friend came out to me as gay and i'm like and then all my Christian friends said, oh, no, you can't have that. Uh, oh. So I was like, right, sod you lot, I'm off. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. And um, so I basically went from kind of fundamentalist Christian to atheist in about the space oh. of about 10 minutes. 
because wow. I could not sit on the fence. It was too painful to sit on the fence. So I just went, right, atheist. And then I started exploring other things and eventually I found paganism and like realized I was oh. a pagan. And then it was like, yay, woo. Um, That's fascinating. Did it, yeah. did, Cause that was a very quick transition. Like, yeah. did you find that you made the transition quick, but then afterwards there's like a, a, a lag where everything you, else had to catch up. With yeah. You. yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Must have been quite a journey. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the, there's other stuff that happened later that's com more complicated as well. But you know, it took me a while to get the the claws of the fundamentalist worldview out of my psyche. Oh, I bet. Um, yeah. Oh, but yeah, I, I think it's you know when you're in that very rigid thing, it's really difficult to kind of. I had a long process of doubt before this ten minute changeover moment. Um, mm. But when it actually happened, it was like right, I've got to get off this fence right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, wow. Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, I think yeah. everyone's process is a bit different. So it's really oh, definitely, interesting. Definitely. Mine was very gradual um, because, like, um, I was, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, with, with, that, with that faith that I used to have, that faith system, like, I was very rigid to it. And, um, and so making that change in beliefs took a good three or four years. Mm. Um, to go through the process of the first stage was um, accepting that um, queerness is actually exists that was actually a first level mm. um, even though I was I didn't believe it existed I believed it was like a, like a temptation like a thing that you fight or something yeah. that's actually part of you um, so partly was the first step of the journey was accepting that and then the next journey was accepting that it's okay to actually be Mm. Um, and then the next stage after that was the going beyond accepting and realizing the magic there and the um, the fact that it's a core part of you and um, that means there's a core part of you that needs to be utilized and yes. um, should flourish and should be cherished and um, you know just as any other part of your life or any other talent that you have um, yeah absolutely and you know like I always say from a Wic from a Wiccan perspective, you know, when we step into the Wiccan circle, we're bringing our whole selves before the gods. And wow. that includes queerness, you know, like my bisexuality and my gender and everything else is like a core part of who I am. So like I bring that in front of the gods and mm. I, I don't kind of leave it at the door or something, you know, so that would be mm. bizarre. Exactly. And isn't that a wonderful thing? Like when you come to that realization, um, cause like, you don't know you don't realize when you're missing something like you kind of know but you don't really realize it it wasn't until i gained it um that it all clicked yeah what a wonderful um, moment yeah yeah i can almost pinpoint it actually like there was a there was a specific moment um i i was on a trip to london um this was before i moved to london i was on a trip to london um with my ex and he was my first boyfriend and um I remember we were just crossing the street. It was like, you know, we were just crossing the street. I remember looking at him, looking at him, and it just clicked. <laughs> I just thought, Do you know what? I undeniably love him. Aww. And on top of that, I 100% know that it's right and it's good. And like, it was just in that split moment. And from that moment on, like, all the shame that was that I built up kind of just disappeared um, because that was like a conf confirmation the lived experience confirmation and um, mm. you know i spent years studying like bible studying it and you know whatever and it was all like an abstract concept yeah so um, that was like a switch moment of like falling in love oh um, yeah yeah it was quite sweet. <laughs> that is so beautiful <laughs> um <laughs> yeah it's one of those moments that i'll always cherish and um yeah and um i actually got a tattoo like um like off the back of that like <laughs> I remember like with, in the following moments like formulating this this tattoo I gave in my head um because it was such a transformative moment um and uh yeah and I've never never let go of that since oh. um, the sort of magic of of realizing that it's I not can't do what they sit there that's what I'm <laughs> 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 not only real but but true and good and, yes um, absolutely and fulfilling and you know you know spiritually um, nurturing um, so yeah oh. Oh. <laughs> that is just so beautiful 
and so true and so oh yeah <laughs> trying not to cry now <laughs> yeah i tried to blush <laughs> oh. oh that is just so lovely uh yeah i've got an onion in my eye there oh of course of course we're chopping onions yes it is um right so yeah so you, you told us a bit about your current practices which i sounds wonderful and I love the idea that you've just kind of gone okay right I've got I've got a, a need to do this thing so I'm just going to do do this that's really yeah. really great I love it um yeah and sounds like a really good way to go as well I mean, mm. it kind of just fine. happened organically like I didn't you know make a conscious decision it just kind of happened <laughs> yeah um, because one thing was gone and it ended up being replaced and um it was interesting as well because then it became a personal thing like what will enrich me in this way um so and that's and that's interesting because like another another thing that sort of became my sunday ritual was um i would take some time out to um i'd make sure every saturday every weekend the saturday was about seeing people my ritual was to make sure that i spend time invest time in my community which um is like the translation of going to the church community Mm. And every Sunday became this um, opportunity. I would walk into central central London, and I'd just spend um, a limitless amount of time, as long as I needed, to just walk around and be amongst like the busyness mm. and feel connected to the world. But also, it was private time for me, and um, that became my reflection time, but also my connection time, um, mm. because I think my perception of God transferred from being this singular like a far off object to a spirit which is manifested in humans mm. and so by going into these busy places with like just this vast diversity of people you know going around their own business yeah. and I just found that like really beautiful and spiritually uplifting like sometimes I just sit on the on, on a bridge on the on the Thames and just look out at everyone and be like wow this is so cool um so that kind of that kind of a place it all came very naturally I didn't really realize I was doing it until like maybe six months um like into that uh, chapter oh i love it anyway. that's really good <laughs> yeah um yeah so um tell us also about your tarot deck because um mm. it, i've i really look i looked at all the cards on your youtube video and um just found them really intriguing because i'm uh, like i said my thing is runes and i find the runes to be like a doorway into another into a realm that's like an archetypal realm for that rune mm. and most tarot decks I look at the tarot deck and I'm like well that's a very nice picture but it's a curtain and not a window into that realm uh, um whereas your tarot deck because the symbols are more abstract I'm like cool this could be this could be the window I'm looking for oh I love that idea I think that's true I love that that idea that each card or or rune like takes you to this whole space archetype space and it's very mm. vast and what I love about it and this is what I found so fascinating when I first was introduced to it was how you already know it like you go through a, I went to the process of going through each card and learning them but once you've got the gist of the card mm. you know it because these archetypes are things that we can all relate to with our experiences and with life and so when I first first ever drew the tower card um, for mm -hmm. example no, I think a better example was um well, let's go with the tower with the tower card, for example. As soon as I read the, you know, the basic idea of it, I was like, I get this card totally. And mm. I found like two years online, I still look at it and I see it on a deep level. And um and that's really fascinating. Um it's sort of like the tower is already something we got we get. It gets it gets us as humans and we get it and it makes sense. Um but um, but like with my tarot deck, what was interesting was it's interesting. I feel like I've only in the last like two or so weeks started to get feedback from people who are using it and and have got a copy, and um, my my head's just been kind of blown <laughs> with um how people have connected with it, um because um when I made it, I made it in quite a naive frame of mind like I knew the tarot quite well and mm. I translated it personally but I hadn't really I'd never bought another deck I had a Rider Waite Smith deck I'd never bought another tarot deck um and 
I didn't really have many friends who were also into tarot. I had like two or three friends so um, who were. So I did it from quite a fresh, naive yeah. mind. Um, so, it, so it was just very much Ryderick Smith and then my own personal translation. And that was, that was it input wise. Um, and I didn't really share it throughout the process or get feedback during the process. So it's been really touching to see that people have responded well to it. And I think, I think that's what kind of makes it accessible because it's, it's not like a really personal deck. I haven't made it my deck and mm. put my spin on everything, but I've simplified it and tried to make it, um, well, as you said, so it's a window. People see it, they, they can enter that archetype, that world for each card and not be hung up on a little translation that I put in there or um, or it's just spelled in style because I because I really like the idea of like minimalist decks like yeah. I love them they're very elegant very beautiful but when I was looking and thinking about buying one they were all just they all just lost all that meaning and I knew that I would be able to read it like um, so that was a heavy influence in that was I couldn't find a deck like it out there already mm -hmm. um, so, yeah yeah we totally need more minimal <laughs> stuff um yeah. i mean i've always wanted this is this is my thing i have always wanted a deck that was like really simple looking woodcuts um mm. so if we could get your deck but then have it in a woodcut style then i'd be even happier <laughs> <laughs> i love you know, i love woodcut style um all those kind of printing style that like woodcut style like lino printing styles mm. um I'd love a deck like that myself, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, like um, your next one. Um, I've forgotten yes, the name of your next deck, uh, but that kind of light. looks woodcutty. Yeah, it, yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, I think um, when I was sort of trying to develop the style, I had in mind that kind of like screen print or um, lino cut style. Mm. Um, you know, I, I allow you to see like the, the texture of like um, layers of pen um, and in many ways, it does look a bit like it's been chipped away. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very, very different to, to Trinity Tarot, um, completely different style wise, like mm. completely, you know, Trinity Tarot was all digitally um, done, um, not even with a pen, it was digitally done with a mouse. Um, wow. it's, yeah. it's all clean lines, very like, I think there's only what, uh, five colors in total? Four colors, five. Wow, yeah. Five colours in total, like it's very minimal colour wise. Um, and then this new one, <laughs> there's like paper texture, it's freehand. And I have allowed myself in this one to be more um, more creative in how I interpret each card. Mm. But it's very informed as well by the Trinity Tower. Um, it's like I've taken that next step along. Yeah, um, it's fascinating. So cool. And I really like your gender neutral um, court cards as well, like the, the keeper and the crown and and the apprentice. And and the other one is the ace, isn't it? So, yes. Yeah, I really yeah. liked that. Well, thank you. It so was an interesting one because I, I I sort of debated whether I should gender neutralize all of the cards, um, including things like the hanged man and the high priestess and, and such. Mm. And I think for this deck, because especially because I, again, I was coming quite a naive frame of mind. I already felt naughty that I was changing the names. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I was like, no one's going to want me to change the names of these. Um, and also like, I love my wide weight Smith deck and I I didn't want to change it where it wasn't needed. Mm -hmm. So I think in that, in, in the Trinity Tower deck, I, I decided I'll gender neutralize it when it's about, um, uh, a more equality. generic thing yeah when it's about equality because with the court cards what i found specifically with the court cards is it is about a a progression of mastery um mm. and maturity and in that sense i couldn't abide the idea of obviously out of the four cards only one being represented as female but also the very very top of course as a male yeah and so whereas i felt okay with the high priestess and the um uh the hyphen and emperor and stuff yeah, Still I mean, I think there. those are kind of based on a specific story sort of thing. Exactly. So they're, or a they specific stand alone. Archetype. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although so in that... the new deck, I have I have renamed them. Ah. Um, 
So in the new deck, and I only decided on this recently, um, the two pairs, or how I see them, the pairs, um, the, the, um, the Emperor and the Empress, I am renaming to the Creator, um, as in the Empress is the Creator, and the Emperor being the Protector. Ah. Um, and like, I've been going around and around in circles what words I can use, because I don't want to lose the essence. Because yeah. really the essence is, in traditional terms, a mother figure and a father figure but I needed to gender neutralize that yeah. um, but without losing that feeling and I felt with the the mother role creator made sense it's about um that like nurturing and that growth and that like creativity and the intuition and um protector had that kind of more um you know that provider strength um yeah side of things um, so I renamed those two, and then I've renamed the High Priestess and the Hierophant, and they are going to be the Revealer and the Proclaimer, and I'm sure you can assume Ooh. which one is which, um, I like because, that. yeah, so, um, because I think that's what they are, like, yeah. the High Priestess is um, a Revealer, or at least she, she encourages you. I yeah, which she's standing like, at the gateway yeah, exactly. of, of the mysteries, absolutely. Yeah, yeah she's right. encouraging you to reveal things and to look and to, like, open your mind, Um Whereas the proclaimer is dictating a truth to you. And sometimes that's a good truth. It's not always bad. I think yeah. I always I I always automatically think negative about the hierophant. Yeah. Well, um, hierophant means somebody who manifests the mysteries. Heros, mm, the mystery, fan is to manifest that's as in phenomenon. Oh wow. Oh, that's really fascinating. I didn't know that. And that's a really nice positive spin on it. <laughs> I really like it. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I oh, looked I it up the other day because, mm. um, you know, someone associated me with that card and I was like, oh, what? Because <laughs> I was oh. just like, I'm not the Pope. <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> okay, let's look up what this actually means. Oh, okay. Yeah, now I can see it. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, that's excellent. So, um, oh, that's, oh, I'm glad you shared that little nugget with me. I mean, that's, that's a nice, a nice glow on that card. <laughs> I've always looked at it so negatively. Um, it's really hard to get past the the Pope image, right? Yes, exactly. And actually, that's a design that I changed very recently. And I think actually for the second edition of Trinity Tower, I think I am going to replace the Popal hat, the Popal hat, the diadem. I think yeah. I'm going to replace that with a book, which is what I've done with um, Transient Light. I've used a book um, so that it could be a teacher or it could be a Pope ah. or it could be whatever you like. Neat. So, um, yeah. I like that. Mm. Yeah, and also the um uh the 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 Pope's title, Pontifex, means mm. was actually originally the title of a pagan priest of Rome and they stole it and applied it to the Pope. Well, a lot of things about um about their traditions and the things they do are stolen. I think. Oh yes. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little just bit. Just a bit, yeah. Like every attribute of the Virgin Mary. Yeah, exactly. uh, loads of saints, the Trinity, all the stuff. like all of those things. Yep. And, yeah, a ton of stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. So, um, right, my my list of questions has gone away because my phone <laughs> screen has. There we go. Oh. Right. Um, yeah. So, so you your favorite? What, um, I was going to ask you about your favorite other tarot deck. So. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, Oh, okay, let me think. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go with the ones that I use the most. The ones that I move, use the most, and I've already said that I use the, the Rider away a lot. That's um, kind of my home deck. Um, but the cards that I use a lot are... Um, I'll get some time for you. Ooh. I love uh -huh. this one. The tarot shelf. Yes, <laughs> which is slowly getting bigger. Um, is this one the um the illuminated tarot oh don't know that one. Oh, so this one is fascinating um so it's only 53 cards huh. and what the creator has done caitlin keegan is she took the major arcana and she merged them with different minor arcana cards so oh. you'll go through and you'll have minor cards but then you can see that they've doubled up meaning wow find, for example it's really it's really really beautiful and the artwork is just and it's oh, actually yeah. we were talking about woodcut it's quite 
some of them are quite woodcutty. Oh yeah, in yeah. Style. Um, sort of like screen printing or something almost. Exactly. Mm. Um, this is one of my favourite ones. Look at that. Oh yeah. Beautiful ones. Yeah, so nice. um, I'm trying to find an example of one of these merges. Strength is one of them. The strength merges. Um, I think it's the it's the Ace of Wands. I'm not going to be able to find it now. <laughs> ah, here we go. So here we go. So the Ace of Wands has been oh, merged wow. with Strength. Oh yeah. Oh, that's and, um, yeah. Yeah, and then um, the Eight of Wands is the Tower. Oh yeah. So I love that, and I find it's really great. It's like one card reads. I love that one. It's just and it's just so beautiful. So that's, that's one great. I use a lot. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely oh. recommend it. And it comes in a really nice like box. And she's that is a nice box. I like. Yeah. She's made like a really nice little. Oh yeah. Read guide. That's great. So, um, yeah, I think I think. Well, I could talk all day about them. To be honest, <laughs> that one, the wild, the wild unknown, is also one that I I really love. Um, and another one that I really love is the, um, oh, I'm going to forget his name now. R. Eads. Where they all join up together nicely. Oh, wow. It's uh, like a like a long picture kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. And the first thing I did when I bought it was lay them all on the floor and it all joined up. Oh, wow. And that's a very, very beautiful deck. I'm, wow. I'm, what was that called again? I'm going to have to get my box down. Ah. <laughs> um, it's um. I don't know why the name has escaped me. Thing is, do you know what? Actually, the reason I love it, it's one of my favorite decks, but I don't actually use it as often. And the reason I don't use it as often is because the cardstock has got like a velvety texture. Oh. And so it doesn't slip. No, it wouldn't shuffle very well. No. So yeah. as a result, I actually find it's hard work to use. <laughs> yeah. Which is a shame because it is gorgeous. Wow, I love the gold edges as well. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, now that one, is, is very woodcutty. Yes, yeah, it's all. Oh, oh, oh! I like beautiful paintings and prints. So this one yeah. is called um, the Light Visions Tarot. Oh, and it's by a guy called James R. Eads. Ah, and, good um, to know. I like it his, a lot. His translation of it is just that is that is very amazing. nice. Yeah, I love it. So I hugely recommend that. Yeah. Um, cool. So yeah, they're, they're my top ones, I think. I, yeah, I have a recommendation for you, which I actually Ooh, gave yes, my copy of it to a dear friend of mine. Um, mm. But I ha I would recommend the Stevie Postman Tarot. Stevie Postman. Um, yes, S T E V double E, because um, it's like a queer, it's a queer tarot. Very lovely. Very it's very nice. good, and he's, so he's done the lovers. So there's like two, you get three lovers cards. There's a two women, two men, and like um a gay a man and a woman mm. um so you can like use whichever one yeah you're... that's lovely i love that yeah. build your own deck <laughs> yeah absolutely and oh, they're all kind excellent. of photo montages as well so it's oh, pretty lovely. neat yeah oh, i might I have to get some but i gave it to a friend of mine who actually reads tarot because i collect tarot but i don't actually <laughs> <laughs> I, if i want to do a divination i do runes so ah oh, perfect I mean, they're just beautiful things to collect. Cause, they are. I mean, it's like you, it's like you buy one piece of artwork, but it's got seventy-eight pieces of artwork inside it. Yeah, it's value yeah. for many. That's Absolutely. how I justify it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think one of my fun ones, uh, my tarot collection, is just over here. Um, I've got the world's smallest tarot deck. <laughs> oh, that's tiny. Isn't it that's cute? So cute. <laughs> yes. There oh, we that's are. So lovely. Yeah. Like, uh, got it in a, a secret, and it's actually even smaller than it looks because it, when it, there you go, it's tiny. Oh, that's lovely. Tiny. Oh, it's so cute. I and actually, it's, tiny um, um, yeah, the cards aren't, you know, I don't, the cards are kind of not really my style, but I just love the fact that it's the world's smallest tarot oh, deck. Oh, definitely. So cute. Oh, it'd be nice to have like a little, like a little mini deck that you can carry around in your pocket. Yeah, I mean, this that's the thing with this one. You can, and it has got a little book with it as well, so mm. that you can, you could easily carry that around in your pocket. So definitely. that's pretty neat. I definitely want to get hold of more queer decks as well. Um, I've been having some conversations with um, a few uh, queer tarot um, readers and creators, and um, 
there are a few out there, but like this, 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 there isn't, there isn't like a desire for more. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really keen to, to get hold of some more. Um, and I think there's a quite a few, like in, uh, there's a couple of people on Instagram that I follow who've got Kickstarters like are coming, I think at some point. And, um, which are, which are queer and, um, yeah, I think there's, I think there's some really great stuff that are to come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to come. It's um, very exciting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've only got two queer decks at the moment. I've got, I bought the, um, the Pride collaboration deck, which is by a broad number of artists. And then I got the Tarot Rama, um, oh. which is by um, another British creator. Um, and it's more of an erotic deck. Ooh. And it's, well, it's quite, well it, it, it's quite explicit it's very explicit <laughs> um but it, and it's really colorful like look at this oh yeah um what's interesting about this deck though although it is um it's like a masculine well not masculine it's a male based um queer deck yeah what's what is beautiful about it and i haven't quite seen in any other decks that i own anyway is the the device the diversity in it of of body and of gender and sexuality oh great um uh it's really really it's really really great really really great i would definitely recommend that that um, sounds good yeah hmm. cool so yeah anyway before i go through every single deck that <laughs> I own, yes i actually have a, a video on my youtube channel where i go through uh oh, really? my tarot decks and go hey, hey oh. look i got this one it's pretty <laughs> <laughs> so... they're so nice to have that one they i love just yeah. i love like getting a new deck and just being able to go through it all and each translation and just enjoying the artwork so cool so nice. well thank you this has been great and um is there anything else you want to add before we go i don't think so um i think um i think uh the initial questions that you sent over got me thinking a lot about queer magic um in particular mm. and i was sort of thinking about that because as i said like the word magic is something that i haven't really associated with even though like I know it and um it's something that I was thinking about um like what does that mean to me and I think people who have the queer experience or very close to the queer experience their their life and the society that we live in forces them to go through a unique journey but a unique but a unique journey that often means they're forced out of the normal and forced out of the binary mm. and um they're forced into situations where they have to be very brave and where they can often get hurt and such and i think that's a journey which sort of brings a unique ma magic to like to queer people and uh, it gives them a strength which i think most straight people or straight identifying people um never really get the opportunity to learn or experience mm. because it's not firsthand and they're never forced into it um for me example you know the you know I, I spoke earlier about that story where i realized i was in love like a massive journey for me in life was coming to terms with the fact that i can love and like what questioning what love is and i don't think i would have ever made that much effort to understand love if i hadn't been forced to by the mm. by, by this idea that perhaps my love was sinful and I'm really thankful for Jenny and I'm thankful that I'm queer because of that because if it wasn't for that I don't think I'd have the perspective and the appreciation of what my love is and beyond that what my magic is and what my skills are if it wasn't for that um so yeah that's my little ramble on that topic <laughs> I love it yeah I mean for me I think you know just the fact that we have to step outside the preordained box that we were put in and go okay uh where am I going? What am I doing? Exactly. <laughs> and who am I? And, and all of that <laughs> stuff is definitely part of the, the queer journey that I don't think, and I think you're right, I think other people don't experience that. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so, you know, you have to kind of go, right, what is my path here? Exactly. And, and that exactly. in itself is a magical act to the self-discovery side of things. Definitely, definitely. And in a way, you become like a bridge for a lot of different things like you don't have the barriers that the majority of people have and are stuck on um and i think i've gone from a place where i was sort of jealous of the simplicity of 
being straight to a place where I'm like, actually, I feel bad for those who are straight. <laughs> <laughs> because I've got these benefits, you know, and, and that's the way of the world, isn't it? Like there's pros and cons to everything. And um, there's such a rich beauty and um, magic um, to be found in your sexuality or your gender um, and just your identity generally. Um, and it's so important in this life to harness that and accept that and to sort of kill that or suppress it is just one of the worst things you can do. Mm, um, absolutely. You know, I mean, suppressing life, isn't it? Yeah. Like mm. when you think of all the people who were forced to suppress their queerness and their, and their magic to exactly. get by, it's just like heartbreaking. Mm, yeah. And it's so good that now we have the opportunity to discover this this whole new landscape exactly exactly it's quite exciting it's, it's, it's exciting yeah um, it really is yeah. well um so i'm really looking forward to seeing what you create next because it's, it's very you. exciting um and uh I also take this opportunity to thank the friend who pointed me in your direction um because <laughs> uh i wouldn't have probably wouldn't have discovered your work otherwise um and uh obviously recommend everybody to follow you on youtube and instagram and um thanks ever so much for coming on the show it's been great thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much fantastic Cheers.